You will certainly know a whole bunch of famous entrepreneurs like Richard Branson, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs and so many others. How about this question? Name just one super famous freelancer. Are you struggling to find one, right? It may not be easy to identify a freelancer at the same level of exposure, like let's say a Silicon Valley star such as Peter Thiel. You do know a few famous freelancers though. One of them is the American businessman Ray Kroc, founder of the McDonald's Corporation. He worked multiple freelance jobs before, but it was his job as a freelance salesman for milkshake mixers that got him involved with the McDonald's brothers. Ray Kroc got his foot in the door through freelancing. I do know what you think now. Someone like Ray Kroc was a freelancer at some point, but it wasn't really the freelancing that got his big break as a major entrepreneur or when he got famous. It was only after his entrepreneurial success with the McDonald's Corporation when he kind of blew up as more famous. And yet it was the freelancing that Ray Kroc did prior to starting his big venture that paved his way. Freelance jobs often led to starting big companies. So apparently freelancing is some sort of early checkpoint on the business journey. The freelance model is entrepreneurship light for people with strong entrepreneurial tendencies. Even some researchers see freelancing as an employee entrepreneurship hybrid because you are being hired by corporations yet the entrepreneurial risk as a solo entrepreneur is carried by you. So freelancing indeed seems like the logical step to bridge your employee past and present with your entrepreneur future. The key aspect is volume and getting started. Despite fantasizing of what success as an entrepreneur looks like on the internet. I mean think about it. Would you rather be stuck at a job you hate rather be worrying about not having the million dollar idea that doesn't exist to start a big company? Or does the solution to go out and test yourself as an entrepreneur right now sound more thrilling to you? By picking a field of choice and firstly selling yourself, your time and expertise in exchange for some money, that's freelancing. By the way, if you can do that, providing any work in a field you kind of like and getting paid for the time you need to do it, without losing money, you are statistically already more successful than most entrepreneurs, including some of the bigger ones who burn tons of investment money without ever being profitable. Cause it's about mastering the basics and if that is solid, you certainly have the ability to build a structure with a team, providing the same services but now at scale and that's already entrepreneurship. Not always, but very often the people who found major entrepreneurial success have simple stories of how they provided freelance work or something comparably early on. Actually, Bill Gates can be used as an example here as well. I'm not talking about Microsoft, I'm talking about teenager Bill Gates and his tendency towards hacking. Equipped with a cocky attitude, a strong interest in computer programming and a very capable mind, Gates hacked into the computer's scheduling software and placed himself in all girls' classes. He taught himself to invade certain systems and was able to crash the computers of major corporations. As soon as he pulled that off with a big company, the CCC, Computer Center Corporation, together with Paul Allen and two other students, they got caught and banned from the computer lab for one year. And here something remarkably similar to the freelancing concept comes into play. Bill hated that punishment. So he managed to get himself some additional computer time by selling his computer skills. He offered to fix some glitches in the software he hacked. He leveraged his expertise to get what he wanted. Back then it was access to computers. Today the currency could be money. All of these things add up to the big picture. And despite talking about moral implications of Bill Gates hacking, the thing that he did that was quite smart and also propelled both his ego and his career to a new level was that he found a an instant way to channel his skills and his talents. So the thing that you should be most worried about right now is finding one single person to buy the service from you. And that should be the priority before getting anxious about the design of your business card. That's why Bill Gates' learning curve on how to successfully do business skyrocketed. He experimented with his technical skills and even though he was super smart and had a good understanding of engineering, he figured out that his talent was on the business side. 
Thus, you would always find him among a team, usually very smart people who excelled at the things that Gates wasn't as talented in. That is partially how he got himself from a single gifted computer guy to becoming the major entrepreneur in the Microsoft era. This story is tactically enough to teach the most basic business principles. That's your business course right there for free. The elephant in the room is the following question though. How is it difficult to successfully start and run a company when there is so much advice on business and entrepreneurship out there? The answer is probably something like easier said than done. The answer is misconception. One of the main issues that holds us back from successfully pursuing an entrepreneurship career is our idealism and lack of action. I would even call it lack of minimum viable action. What's the smallest specific action step you could do right now to get a sale? That's the actual question that you should be concerned about. Talking about idealism, we think entrepreneurship is about finding the million or billion dollar idea, getting high level investors to fuel your magic idea with a couple of hundred thousands of seed money, until your organization magically grows big enough to have an IPO. That's the original Silicon Valley story we know, but that has so little to do with real entrepreneurship. It probably won't ever happen like that to 99.9% .9 of the people. The successful entrepreneurs did not chase the fanciest or the coolest ideas from the get-go. You are trapped into thinking real entrepreneurship has to be the app you create that sells a billion times. Or starting a fancy tech company or being the founder of the next major quant hedge fund. Don't get confused on terminology by the way, tactically the concept of entrepreneurship is not only based on creating and running a business, but also being linked to the aspect of novelty, something that does potentially change the status quo in the marketplace. But I argue your chances of becoming a proper entrepreneur are much better when building something solid as a successful business. The skills, the learning and certainly the money will be a ticket to eventually drive something novel. The idea of becoming or even being an entrepreneur from the get-go because of your light bulb idea that literally changes the world is rather delusional. Creating impact out of nothing can barely be done. There has to be a starting point. And most of the famous entrepreneurs we admire have a track record of minor successes and minor failures before they became these mega entrepreneurs. It's not magic, it's volume and common sense paired with people and luck. Answer this question, would you rather waste energy and valuable time fueling your illusions, being rich on paper and broke in reality, or run an actual company that makes freaking money? Freelancing is so good to get into entrepreneurship because it revolves around what matters. Master a skill others find valuable enough to directly pay you for the time and effort you put in. Freelancing doesn't care about the magical million dollar idea. I have a problem and need someone who can help me fix it. Who knows how to do it? You? Great. Fix it. Here's the money. Thanks. Bye. Whether it's teaching, editing, plumbing, coding, web design or gardening, find the immediate way to convert a sale and make a little profit. Because if you can make a $200 profit over and over again, it's just a matter of scale to make $20,000 or even $2 million at some point. You need a team that you manage and lead well and you do that because you know your business, because you've done it before as a freelancer. Your only challenge is to pick something you like the most or let's say hate the least. Become so good at it that it's fair to ask for money. Then expose yourself to the people who are using such services. Show them why you're the best deal they can possibly strike. And if you experience enough demand for the thing you are now successfully selling one on one, get a second person to join you, a third, a fourth. You handle the structure and negotiate with clients, thus have the entrepreneurial risk and run the whole thing. It's all on you. But you sit there thinking about how to create an AI piece of software that will change the world, putting you on Forbes. 
fantasizing. Meanwhile, there's a teen girl grabbing a mic, interviewing celebrities out on the street and posting clips on social media, running a podcast and building her brand. Meanwhile, there's a guy who simply likes gardening and wants to understand the best possible ways to trim the hedge. He offers free work to owners of nice properties. They are happy with him, so they hire him. He eventually builds a team in his area doing it for him while he gets into gardening technology. Further down the road, this gardening guy comes up with a state-of-the-art machine to maintain the lawn cheap and automated. He sells tens of thousands of that technology. This may be a way more realistic path to true entrepreneurship. You're waiting for the perfect idea, spending zero time to making progress out there in the marketplace, which is bigger than ever. Others are seeking novelty by taking action on the things they can control now. These are the people who you look up to in a few years as game-changing entrepreneurs. But to change a game, you better start playing in the first place. What's the strategy though? You basically want to find any service you can sell. Thus, you need to develop the expertise and ideally the sales skill to get potential clients to buy your work. Once you understand what it is that you have that others want at least enough to pay you a little bit, you can double down on that. From freelancing right into entrepreneurship. There are studies that show freelancers identified the key obstacles of freelancing as finding clients and the income fluctuations on a monthly basis, even weekly. And yet there's hardly anything as flexible as freelancing when it comes to designing your career on your terms. You don't have to have a physical product because you can sell knowledge and expertise. And let me give you another perspective on finding clients and leveraging into entrepreneurship. Who are freelancers hired by? Exactly, other entrepreneurs. So even if you haven't made it into traditional entrepreneurship yet, your freelancing occupation is literally going to force you into the entrepreneurship environment. Forget about the hourly pay for a second and imagine how much insights you're being exposed to by providing your knowledge to other entrepreneurs. You can engage with them, you understand the structure of their venture, you put yourself in their shoes. In the meantime, you are already practicing your entrepreneurship journey because you carry the risk. You set the pace and prioritize and you choose the direction you are heading. These are some of the absolute fundamentals you will need for your full-time entrepreneurship career. Do you still think you are so far away from living the entrepreneurship dream? Go for freelancing. Become an entrepreneurship enabler. Thanks for watching.